Hello, welcome back to Fire Sense Gaming. My name is Ben, and today we're going to continue on with Suzerain. Last time out, we met with the old guard and had a long conversation with our son, Frank. So, today we're just going to pick it up where we left off, as usual. And we're going to start with the newspapers. Looks like we got three of them. So, from the whole sword post, attacker opened fire on protesters, 17 dead. Man opened fire in Vezord City Center during a protest march organized by the Communist Party of Swordland against the murder of Bernard Circus. The attacker used a military-grade machine gun dated 1929, which is suspected to be part of the inventory of the Swordish Armed Forces. The attacker killed himself right after shooting 25 people, killing 16. He took out the weapon from the newsstand at the square, brandished it, and yelled, Come, I'll give you freedom, one witness said. Highly charged word freedom was previously associated with Bluetooth separatists, but has been widely used during the previous month of protests against the murder of Bernard Circus. Minister of the Interior Lily Scroff said that she has spoken to the Chief of Bezard Police and asked him to take strict action. The government will not tolerate any such incident. The perpetrators will not be spared. Interesting. Alright. Let's see. And to the Lockhaven Times. Gelsord FC, Honorc FC, Derby postponed due to protests. One of the most anticipated matches between Gelsord and Honorc was postponed because of the intense protests in the city of Honorc. League has issued the following statement regarding the situation. Due to safety reasons, players are compromised during this time of trouble. We have decided to postpone the game. Moreover, we stand in solidarity with the fans, our players, and the people of Anarka in the fight against injustice. Mayor Curtin Les has also made a statement. It is a tragic day of Swordman where the president himself refused to act in the face of communism. It is said that inaction breeds doubt and fear. Thus, I fear that the spread of communism has sown deeper inside the heart of the nation than we thought. However, I and the people of Anarka will never stop fighting for the soul of our great country. Brilliant. All right, last but not least here, maybe, is uh, from the Radical, uh, Undemocratic Elections of Swordland. Swordland has an electoral threshold of 10%. This means any political parties that are under 10% can't, uh, under 10% of the vote can't even enter the assembly. This is the very reason why the United Swordland Party holds 52% of the seats in the assembly today. It's also the reason why the largest ethnic minority of Swordland is non-existent in Swordish politics. The last elections have shown that the pro-Blutish WPB had an enormous voter base of just above 9%, but it still failed to meet the 10% threshold and couldn't enter politics. Similarly, the CPS has won about 8% of the general vote, but was eliminated. This means that millions of voters are not represented in our current government. Moreover, this has benefited the USP most and gave them the lawmaking power. The undemocratic threshold needs to be lowered down so that there is true representation in the Assembly and true representation of our voices. No one could call Sorland a democracy without a decrease for a constitutional proposal that does not include such change democratic. Cool. That's nice. I don't care at the moment. All right. Well, let's take a look at our reports. So from Morna, uh, Morna Industrial Output Concerns. The mayor of Morna has reported that the industrial output numbers this year are 12% lower than last year. They are requesting additional support to improve the in uh, industrial capacity, including machinery and personnel to combat the downward trend. With the construction of several new factories in Morna, the mayor stated his belief that an economic upturn in the city is still possible if government investments succeed. According to the pr current projections, Morna is set to lose an additional 2% of industrial output next year. However, recent data from the municipality suggests that an investment worth several billions of ren will stop the downward trend and in increase the industrial output in a short amount of time. Alright, and from Antel Rock Prison, uh, Prisoner's Riot. Yesterday, around 11 a.m., a prison riot started in Ward C of the Antel Rock Prison, which was eventually suppressed. Ward C is generally used for keeping political prisoners, and the riot started when a warden was killed by a British political prisoner. Four guards and 21 prisoners died. 134 were injured. Nice. Alright. Well, we got two reports here from Whole Sword. The USP report on reforms. Uh, many members of the USP, led by Alvin Clavin and their former swing of the party, clarified their demands from the government and the party congress. In the upcoming constitutional reform, Alvin Clavin stated that without ministry reforms, they won't be able to stand behind the new reform package. Cool, I guess? And report from Underhall. Uh, Underhall Construction's project manager from Ellen Railway has reported that the project has been progressing well and they have already started laying down the foundations for the ground retaining walls, bridges, and tracks. Project supervisors from the government confirmed the report, saying that most of the preliminary work has already been done by Underhaul and everything's going according to schedule. Brilliant. I probably should have gone with the other company, but that's okay. A little late now. Alright, let's go to the presidential visit to Narbel. I was traveling to the snow-covered city of Narbel in the Nargis region for the Rural Development Forum, organized by the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education. 
The mountainous city of Narbel had gritty tones to it. It's mostly regarded as one of the more pop uh, poorer cities in Swordland, as people were hardy and wary. Even after the discovery of natural resources in the area, years of neglect by the central government were apparent on the buildings and the general infrastructure. Natural resources, namely gas and oil, were now under the control of Gasom, which elevated the corporation to a place of power. My task in this forum was mainly symbolic. Fake smiles and handshakes with oil barons, meeting local politicians, but most importantly of all, to make sure that Narbel does not feel like it was forgotten by the government. The scenery so far, however, was a reflection of Narbel's neglect. Main roads to the city were not maintained well. There are many bumps, empty, discolored spots in the asphalt. Navigating and swerving to avoid the inconveniences, our motorcade finally started nearing the city. As if my discomfort from the bumpy ride was apparent to him, Sir rolled down the partition window. We'll be arriving at Hotel West in a few minutes, sir. Ugh, can't say it's been a comfortable ride, Serge. I am sorry, sir. The roads here aren't the best. After a moment, Serge started to smile under his mustache. <laughs> What's the smile for? Sir, I just want to say, it has been great these last two months. As you know, my wife Susan recently gave birth to our son, sir. And now my daughter just started a very good high school in Ah, yeah, that's great news, Serge. I'm happy for you. I appreciate it, sir, truly. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to afford a good private school if she scored less in the entrance exams. But I shouldn't have made my insecurity to get to me. Eric outsmarts me all the time. I'm very proud to have a daughter like her. Huh, I too hope that Diana will grow to be like a mother someday. I'm sure she will, sir. After all, all she is the daughter of a lion and a lioness. My daughter looks up to the First Lady for inspiration. It's not just limited to my daughter, sir. She's inspiration for almost all women in the country. But at the same time, it must be hard for the First Lady as well. All this attention, adjusting to this new high-profile life, the husband has great responsibility. Eh, I mean, you're right. It's definitely hard for her. It must be, sir. Sometimes we forget the important people in life between all the responsibility and the rush. You know, those we care for. Eh, I agree. Search continued after a moment of silence. Have I told you, sir? We named my son Georg. The doctor said he is very healthy, and thankfully, so is my wife. That's good. Hope the hospital good service. It's a weird sentence, but it's okay. Eh, normally we would have been treated in one of the suburban hospitals, but thanks to special coverage of presidential staff, we were tra transferred to Emerald State Hospital. Eh, glad I can help. There are far more unfortunate people in this country, but thanks. Serge sighed. I already started thinking about the university education, especially Erica. I want to send her to a good private school, but with the current state of the economy, it's going to be hard for us. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and pay for his kids, so why not? We'll do it. I'm just going to follow what the guide says. Huh, I can pay for the education of your children and cover the expenses of your family. Uh, Mr. President, there is no way I can... With one look for me, Serge cut his sentence short and nodded at me after moving his hat. Mr. President, I don't know how I can ever repay for this. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, hope you return the favor of helping someone in need someday, just like I did. I will, sir, of course. I think I have decided I'll give your name to my boy. Georg Anton Volkner. May he grow strong like you are. <laughs> I'm sure he will. <laughs> the car hit a major pothole and a bump, which lifted us up in our seats for a second. Ah, uh, are you fine? Yes, sir. I hope the car is fine, too. The motorcade began approaching the hotel. The Hotel West was supposedly the best hotel in Narbel. The large, 25-story main building was undoubtedly one of the taller and more expensive buildings in the city. It towered over the nearby slums and been a target for protests when it was first built. The crowd was gathering from the hotel with a welcoming committee at its center. As we approached the red carpet entrance, I could see the mayor of Narbel and stop aides. Serge got out of the car and opened the door. He bowed his head respectfully and gestured towards the entrance. Thank you. Have a good day, Mr. President. As soon as I left the vehicle, the fresh air of Narbel filled my lungs. Almost immediately, everyone present in the crowd flocked over to me with an excessive display of courtesy, smiles, and handshakes, so I donned the mask of a politician. A mask that I was very used to. Journal entry here. Oh, yeah, it's paying for surge. That's fine. I'm not quite sure why this thing says go ahead and just do it, but it does, so I did it. It's fine. I don't think it makes any difference. We'll probably make plenty of money anyway, so it's all good. 
Alright, let's check these reports first here. From Vezord, Young Sword suspected of terror attack. At approximately 4.46 on Monday, a terror attack occurred in the Vezord city center during a rally by the left-wing CPS. The attacker, suspected to be working with Young Swords or another organization connected to them, opened fire with an automatic rifle on the protesting civilians. Seventeen people were killed, including the attacker, who shot himself afterwards. Witnesses testified that the rifle was hidden behind a newsstand. The local police are now wary of this tactic, and all newsstands will be inspected by the police before and during crowded rallies. Further investigation of the Young Swords are underway. So that's just another report on that newspaper from earlier. Alright, from Whole Sword, a PFJP report on reform, uh, reforms. Friends Richter, leader of PFJP, recently outlined their demands for the reform package. He declared that without the implementation of term limits and limited decrees, it would be very difficult for him and his party to stand behind the reform package. Cool. Alright, we got a whole bunch of newspaper reports here, so let's go to the Whole Sword Post. Protests appear calmer. As protests continue nationwide, tension eases in some cities. Still, several city, major cities, including Deer and Lockhaven, did have some scattered reports of violence on Monday night. Tens of thousands in Deer, Circus's hometown, walked in a memorial march, though police moved in on the thinning crowd as evening settled, making arrests. Authorities and demonstrators began throwing rocks and ignored orders to disperse. The protests in Holstor and in most other major cities appeared calmer, with fewer clashes between civilians and police. Authorities have made at least 9,800 arrests related to the protests, according to a tally from the state press. Alright, let's go to the radical. We've got three here. Alright, shocking misogynist rally. Every day we are appalled by how deep the roots of misogyny goes in our country. We are appalled again when yesterday, uh, during a protest by social media women, counter protesters showed up to disrupt the peaceful rally. The resulting scuffle between the police, the protesters, and the mob, many were arrested from both sides. The road to change is filled with real obstacles, but we said it before, we can do it. Alright, and Soul needs to answer for his crimes. Looking at the history of everything wrong in our country, there's only one figure that everyone points at, Tarkin Soul. He's devolved our country into something much worse than what it was before. He's made crimes against humanity. We also remember the ISM incident, and the wounds that have been inflicted on the hundreds of thousands of people of Flutish ethnic background. We have been calling for his trial. We believe it is time that this government opens the way for a fair trial by removing the undemocratic and absurd laws to protect him. It is time that the Constitution of 1929 that protects soul be changed. People are still waiting for a fair trial, for justice to be served, and for their questions to be answered. And Labor Union Rights March. A large group of Labor Union members gathered around the city of Volgan to protest against the poor conditions of workers' rights in Sordland. People could be seen holding signs pleading for accountability and basic rights in corporate work environments. Dozens of tourist workers are in the midst of the crowd. One worker was heard saying, I know the law gives us nothing on paper. This is the reality we choose to accept. Others pointed out the country is relying on the workers to stop their session, but doesn't give them anything back. Look at how great the rights are in Volks and minimum wage, overtime pay, and safe working regulations. The time for we real workers reform is now. One voice demanded with frustration. We had the opportunity to interview some open-minded managers from corporations. They relayed that the companies have little to no oversight. It's hard to disagree that the time for labor reform is long due. Alvin Clavin, from the former swing of the ESP, has seen the potential and announced that work has begun to explore what can be achieved. The present rain listened to the demands, time will tell. And last but not least from The Economists, education privatization proven successful. Our editorial team immediately analyzed the CEPA report recently revealed to assess the standards of education. We are curious to see how the policies of the last decade have begun changing the performance metrics. Lesby has specifically stood out with a jump of six positions forward to fifth out of 68. After a research analysis collaboration with the Vice President of Magnus Cardis and the SMEA chapter leader of OMAC, we gained critical insights that Lesby increased its education quality. It boils down to two major points. One is the privatization efforts led by Prime Minister Alvarez that led to most schools in wealthy neighborhoods, 1,404 to be precise, to be privatized. This lifted a significant budget burden off the state because the wealthy paid for great education for their kids and were still taxed reasonably in order to, to divert funds to the state schools elsewhere. The second major factor was the allowance of minor curricular changes for private institutions that led to major improvements in student participation, teacher happiness, and boosted the performance of the institutions. All in all, the improvements to the system and massive amounts of 34 billion lira raised for Lesbia made it a lucrative option. Sordland desperately needs more tackle capital to tackle the recession, and when education is privatized, foreign capital will also aid in establishing quality schools. The Vice President of Magnus Cardis pointed out that the CEPA report doesn't include access to education metrics, and that Lesby has inequality problems. A statement that hasn't been proven with any statistical research from OMEX, which is why it must be taken with a pinch of salt. 
The Reign administration could be practical about this term and look to set the southern example of how to do positive change, even though opposition from the Minister of Education is expected. All right. Well, let's head back to Narbel for this briefing on the current welfare situation. I arrived at the meeting room for my talk with Ciara and Pascal. Before beginning, I took a moment to appreciate the view from the balcony. The mountains of Narbel were completely covered with snow. While I was mesmerized by the scenery, Pascal Benningwall walked up to me. My Minister of Health was, ironically, somewhat portly, having gained a few pounds since his breakthrough as best-selling writer. But his authority on social affairs could not be questioned. It's such a spectacular view. Sir Walda, the Minister of Education, joined us on the balcony, dressed in a sky blue pantsuit. Her preference for trousers over dresses made her the subject of much palace gossip, but it didn't seem to bother her in the slightest. Spectacular indeed, but if you look at the opposite direction, you'll see what souls decades of neglect to the city. Most of the people living in Arbel are workers, farmers, and the wives and children. They're breaking their backs of close to no pay, all thanks to greedy corporations. Eh, whatever. I'd much rather be in Hole's Lord right now. Our presence here will show that we still remember Nabla and other forgotten areas in our country. It is important for the people. If you look past the view, you can see the real problems. Real problems like poverty. Pascal nodded gravely. This was a subject he knew quite a bit about himself. His best-known books were about the plight of Sordland's less fortunate, drawn from his own past growing up in squalor. Well put, Miss Walda. I don't need to tell you about my own experiences of poverty. I'm sure you have similar stories. Am I right, Mr. President? I mean, we've all gone through difficult times. Let's uh, go that really terrible play kitty answer. True, but some lives are more difficult than others, like ours was and still is for hundreds of thousands in Solden. You don't have to be born poor to sympathize with the plight of the impoverished, much as you don't have to be born a woman to recognize Solden's need for parity among the sexes. Parity among the sexes shouldn't be our first priority. Look at how many high-ranking female politicians our country has. Appearances can be deceiving, Pascal. Her voice sounded bitter. Think about how Lilius Graf got to a current position. I don't necessarily believe the rumors about her and Sol, but she never could have risen so high if she didn't parent his cause. Gloria Tory, is it an accident that the first female assembly speaker is such a staunch conservative? Then there is Alfonso's hab habit of promoting women to prominent positions to absorb the progressive sheen while accomplishing nothing in reality. But women in places like Narmal are denied any opportunity to advance. The government keeps a handful of female politicians from wealthy families, myself included, to obtain their only obstacle to success is their own lack of initiative. Meanwhile, those of us who don't use our clout to help powerful men stay in power are denigrated as angry spinsters. I ask you, Mr. President, does anyone care that your strategist Mr. Galad doesn't have a wife? Uh, you're going, like, way the hell off topic here, lady. Mr. Pennywell asked, I answered. I, I don't think he was asking about, uh, Lucien's love life, but... You know, whatever, lady. As I was saying, isn't it about time for us to address this country's real issues, rather than bowing to the wishes of the hawks and fear mongers in the establishment and diverting yet more resources to the military and law enforcement? Our welfare, healthcare, and education systems have been decaying since the recession, so these poor communities are losing hope. Hopeless systems and lack of opportunities can drive people to extreme situations. We're seeing increased crime, domestic violence, and yes, rising inequality between men and women. Eh, Lily also take care of crime. She's an expert on the subject. Uh, she is certainly a proven administrator. From what I heard, she reduced crime in Arbery by 40% during a mayoral term. I don't think brute force will get us anywhere. Look at where the tight grip of Tucky and Silk got us. There is another subject I want to mention. I've been working on improving the rights of workers in our country and proposed a draft bill that is currently being reviewed by a party. Mr. Clavin has already backed me, given me his support. So then as formed behind most countries on the subject, it is my responsibility to ensure this is not the case. Uh, sounds like a costly bill for such a low-priority issue. If there's any lives for work as not a priority, then what is? Our administration should be able to set a budget aside for these types of improvements. It is also a matter of life and death. Every decade we hear of some horrific accident to employ a disregard for the worker's safety. So, would you back the bill when it arrives on your desk, Mr. President? Uh, I'm not sure if I should back it or not, so we're just going to be non-committal at the moment. To make a decision, I would need to evaluate the contents in detail. Understandable. You'll receive all the sections in an outline. It's getting a little cold out here. Let's head inside and continue our discussions. We headed back inside. 
Meeting rooms already prepared for state business. Small gifts for each of us been placed on the table by the municipality. We took our seats. All right, well, let's start with your health overview, Pascal. As you wish, Mr. President. Swarthen has a free healthcare system except for a few private hospitals operating under it. Most of the populace receives adequate treatment. Health issues primarily appear in rural areas due to lack of quality of services. I'm doing my best to ensure that citizens of all ages receive the best health care they can. I also personally want to solve the high infant and maternal mortality rate, uh, maternal mortality problem. Jeez. Uh, how many doctors and nurses are employed? We have 31,594 doctors and 73,680 nurses working for the Ministry of Health. That is a high number, which I think is... I don't want to be rude, but out of those numbers, how many are in urban and rural areas? <clears throat> uh, let's not interrupt each other, please. That's not a problem. The number of doctors per 10,000 citizens is far lower in rural areas compared to urban. Treatment time is still too high due to the low number of doctors in rural areas which barely get any proper coverage. How many hospital beds are there per 10,000 citizens? There are 10 beds per 10,000 citizens, which is a very good number according to our comparisons with other neighbors. We see a lower number in countries... Uh, in the countries of Agnolia and Valen, but obviously we can't march thus be out of Oxen. Agnolia and Valen are part of the country takes a stand, but it's good to know we aren't in a huge health crisis yet. What's life expectancy mortality rates? Our life expectancy is 65 years, and the infant mortality rate is a worrying 85 per, 85 per 1,000 births, while maternal mortality is at 90 per 1,000. We are sure that we are doing everything we can to save mothers and the newborn. Those numbers are saddening indeed. I expect nothing but your best efforts to improve the situation. We are working very hard in improving the quality of the services. Thank you, Pascal. Your in-depth briefing is much appreciated. Alright, I want to hear about the education system. With pleasure. Uh, social education is free, but we have a very outdated system that I want to reform. The other important issue is the lack of access to education in rural areas, especially for young girls. The administration has the power to solve both problems. My highest priority is to get enough funding to be able to build schools in rural areas where I can cleanse the educational system of its nationalistic indoctrination and sexist teachings. How many students and teachers do we have? Apparently there are about 5 million students, 3 million in primary, 1 million in secondary, and 1 million in tertiary. There are 155,316 teachers. Solden is full of young and bright minds. Indeed it is, full of potential. I think there needs to be a change in the way of thought. We should help children to question and educate themselves. What's the literacy rate? Uh, the literacy rate of Solden is 80%. This is a very good indicator for future growth, but needs to increase. It's also far lower among girls and boys. If I remember correctly, the most illiterate area is Berger and Einman. That is correct, although Lockheed excuses statistics for the Narcus region, which also has a vast number of illiterate citizens. This underlines my point about the lack of access to education. Alright, well, tell me about the differences between early and rural education. Urban areas have three times the number of schools per 10,000 people compared to rural areas. Rural areas also suffer from lack of teachers. I can imagine teachers not preferring desolate areas for work. Salaries for teachers are very low here. We need to increase the pay to give them more incentive. Thank you. I can fill in the blanks from here. I believe that's everything. Ciara stood up and moved towards the window. She took a deep breath. Uh, what is it, CR? Look at this impoverished city. The streets are full of potholes, the hospital barely functions, the school half open. This is not just about Seoul or even Alfonso failing. This decay in Solon's forgotten regions has been going on for many decades due to structural corruption which is fueled by capitalism. Eh, Tarkin sold them more for the country than any of us. Really? I must agree to disagree then. CR sat back down inside. One way or another, we need to transform. Greed and unchecked capitalism will not magically provide for the people. Eh, I'm just gonna ignore you. What are you working towards, Pascal? I personally want to improve the low quality of healthcare in rural areas, so I created draft plans to increase the salary of doctors and to upgrade the equipment in the hospitals. I can do more with an increased budget. Additionally, a privatization plan to promote private investments in the healthcare system could allocate extra funds. Uh, is it access to healthcare in rural areas more of an issue? Access is an issue, but not as critical as the quality in these areas. They lack, uh, the lack of experienced personnel equipment causes bad treatment, resulting in many deaths. 
I do hope to create competition and increase the quality of healthcare with privatization effort. The private healthcare system would increase the price of treatment and make access worse for the average citizen. Besides, I believe we have decided to promote a more planned economy. Alright, well, tell me about your plans, Ciara. My plans require an increase in the government budget. I aim to solve the problems we highlighted with the allocated money. By building schools in these less fortunate rural areas and through fundamental changes in the education system, I will unlock the potential of all our children, boys and girls alike. Interesting. I thought we had a quality of service problem. Is the source of education lacking in quality? Our statistics show the disparity between urban and rural, ed urban and rural education. We either do something about it or wait until things get worse. But once the promotion of private education helped create additional funds? And yes, but it was co what cost? I'm not a supporter of the private sector in education, because at the end of the day, they focus on profit first. My expectation from our government is that we understand and focus on the needs of the people. There are other significant issues we need to focus on, like security. There have been a lot of negative developments lately. It's the same play in the same book. The security complex in the country keeps driving the agenda as usual. I think we covered all the necessary subjects. Thank you for your time. I do hope we won't repeat the same takes again and again. Have a good day, Mr. President. The ministers left and I attended other official business in the city. The weather was relatively cold, but it didn't keep a group of USP supporters from coming out to cheer at us on the streets. Just by looking at the citizens' attire, it was easy to understand the current state of Narbel. Some people were wearing clothes a few sizes too large. Some kids didn't even have shoes. Yet, there's hope in their eyes. They are excited to see their president in their city. Nice. Alright. Well, that seems like as good a place as any to call it for today. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.